Hey, hey everyone, welcome back to Transcend with Ebony. It's Ebony here dropping by with a really quick message for someone. Well, actually for many of you. The best way to defeat the narcissist as well as the best way to recover from a narcissist um, relationship or toxic relationship is to go complete no contact. I mean, complete no contact. I mean, no text messages, no um, no calls, no emails, no stocking, no stocking their their um, social media accounts, no none of that. I mean, straight no contact. Um, and I mean that for many reasons. For one, if you know that this individual has hurt you to no end. What do you really think getting back in contact with them is going to do? Do you really believe deep down in your heart that they just had a, an epiphany overnight and they're just going to change everything about their character and who they have proven themselves to be? When an individual shows you who they are, believe them. I can't recall who, uh, who that quote was by. Um, but if you know it, please drop that down in the comments and thank you in advance. Um, if an individual shows you who they are, believe them because see, a person could tell you who they are. They can tell you, oh, I'm going to be this to you. I'm going to be that to you. I am this person. This is the kind of person that I am. But what's going to speak is those actions. What's going to speak is the way that they're going to treat you, the way they're going to handle you how they, they act when they're actually in that situation with you. Because many people will fold under pressure. When things get real, these individuals will start lashing out. You know, and, and with a narcissist or a toxic, toxic individual, there are many things that will cause them to lash out and you be the target. But guess what? You are not here to be target practice for anyone. You are not here to be anybody's punching bag. And I mean that in a physical sense or verbally, mentally, emotionally, you are not, you are not created for that. God created you for a purpose. So rather than being concerned about, should I go, uh, should I get back in contact with this individual? Should I just check in to see if they change? Should I just um, make small talk with them and try and gauge where they are, if they change, if they make any progress, if they're different? Because... Nine times out of ten, well, I'm going to say ten times out of ten, if it's a real life narcissist, a real toxic individual that you've been dealing with, this person will, will portray to be that individual that has changed just to lure you back in to hurt you and inflict those same um, uh, pain on you again, to betray you again, to lie to you again, to cheat on you and manipulate you again. Why would you open that door back up? The best way to defeat a narcissist and also recover from narcissistic abuse or a toxic relationship is to go completely no contact. Now, I understand in certain, certain circumstances and situations, you may have to be some form of contact with this individual. For instance, if you have kids with the individual, that can be challenging. But at the same time, this is for someone if you have kids with this individual and every time you go out of your way to make sure that this individual is present in the kid's life because you love your children and you want them to have a relationship with their other parent and you, out of the kindness of your heart, have bent over backwards to try and make sure that that other individual can see the children and all they do is use you as target practice every time you take the children around every time you call them, but yet and still, once they realize that they're not getting no play from you, then they don't care to check on their kids. They don't care to make sure their kids have diapers or food to eat. They don't make sure that they show any ounce of love or care or effort when it comes towards the kids, only to try and get back in your good graces, all to turn around and lash out on you and, and um, try to manipulate you or deceive you or be really nasty towards you uh, just for the fun of it. 
unfortunately, it's sad to say you, you may have to actually go no contact as well. And that is not going to be easy. Believe me and trust me, I know it. It is not easy to go no contact with the individual who you share children with. Because for one, you still deep down inside, you got some type of love for this individual, even though the individual has done you wrong. And I mean wrong upon wrong upon wrong to no end. I mean, it wasn't just the, oops, I'm sorry, it was an accident and I'll never do it again type of wrong. No, it was this individual chose to purposely, um, repetitively, over and over and over again, do the same thing to you. The individual will tell you, oh, I'm sorry, and then do the same thing tomorrow type of thing. When it's that type of situation, the best thing for you to do for you and your children is going to be to go no contact and to distance yourself. Reason being is how can you, and you it, it could be male or female that I'm talking to, how can you be the best parent for your children if you're not 100% your best self? If you're steadily being, if you're steadily being drugged down, being stressed out, being depressed, being hurt, being traumatized, being manipulated, just being kicked over and over and over again by the other parent to your children. How is that going to help you be the best role model, example, or parent to your children? Now, would you rather your, your children, you know, um, be present and, and witness all of this abuse, this toxicity, this manipulation, and learn these things? from this narcissist and become that way themselves because that that is a generational curse and 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 these these you know they will try and bring your children into that this narcissist will try and turn your children against you they will speak negatively about you to your children even in front of you or speak to you very nasty, very disrespectful, very demeaning and belittling in front of your children. Those are planting negative and toxic seeds within your children, telling your children that these things are okay. And by you staying, that is also expressing to your children, oh, it's okay to be abused. It's okay for an individual to treat me this way. It's okay for an individual to abuse me. It's okay for an individual to use me, to lie to me, to, to yell at me, to talk to me like a dog, to cheat on me, so on and so forth. You get my drift? So do you want your child to grow up thinking that it's okay to accept that type of abuse from someone? Do you want your child to think that it's okay for them to act like and treat someone else that way? You have the power within you that God has given you, the God-given power, authority, and strength within you to break that generational curse right here and now. That generational curse can break off of your bloodline by your hand, by you choosing to stand up, by you choosing to, you know what, say, you know what, I'm going to take one for the team. Yeah, it's going to hurt because I love that individual. I wish they would change. But at the same time, I see clearly that individual is not going to change. And right now I have to do what's best for me and my children. I have to think about the security of my children's future. I have to think about the individuals that God has uh, has called me to, to um, raise up in them. You know, speak life over your children. Love on your children. Speak the word of God to your children. Instill the word of God within your children. You know, if you raise them up in the in the way that they should, in the right way that they shall go, they'll never depart from it. Same thing if you choose to raise them up in a toxic manner. If you choose to raise them, them up in a toxic environment, you can't be surprised when they get older and, and they have either they they have some of these same traits or they're accepting this, this same abuse. And then later on, look at it and be like, you know what, that was a whole generational curse right there. I have to deal with it now, my kids are dealing with it. No, stop that right here and now today. And if this happens to be you that I'm talking to, that you are going through the situation, I pray for you. I, I really pray for you. I pray that God deliver you. I pray that God give you peace about the entire situation. I pray that God give you clarity, revelation, give you direction give you strength, give you courage, give you that boldness that you need to stand up for not only yourself, but as a kingdom ambassador and to teach your children, you know what? 
God created you for better. Mommy or daddy is got to put their foot down. This is not acceptable. This is not acceptable for you to tolerate. This is not acceptable for me to tolerate. God created me for a purpose and this is not the purpose in which he created me for is to not, not to sit up here and be abused by anyone. Because you are worthy. You are deserving of greatness. God wants nothing but the best for you and your children. And in you being a parent on the other end of the screen, you are raising up kings for the kingdom of God. You are raising up queens for the kingdom of God. So being around this type of behavior is unacceptable. And I know the Holy Spirit is moving because this is not the direction that I saw this message going in at all. But before I came on, I made sure that I prayed and asked God to take over this message and allow it to be his message, his word, his truth that flow directly from him through me and onto the ears and hearts of those who need to receive this message in this moment, in this hour. And all glory be to God. If this is you, the best thing for you to do is go no contact. No, no matter how hard it may be. Instead of sit here and going back and forth in your mind about the what ifs, the woulda, coulda, shoulda with this individual, or what if this individual changes tomorrow, or what if this, this changes, or what if this individual decides to go and get their deliverance. Yes, you should pray that they go and get their deliverance. Pray that they submit to the Lord. Pray that they seek healing, that they repent. But at the same time, to sit there and make sure that they do it is not your responsibility nor your problem. That's not your battle. That's God's battle. Give him his battle back. Because you can lead a horse to water, but you cannot make him drink. So it don't matter what you tell that individual. You can, you can preach. You can, you can read the word to them. You can quote scripture to them. You can um, pray for them. You can try and deliver them yourself. But if they don't want it, you're wasting your time, effort, and energy. That God gave you to focus on the purpose that he, he provided, that he created for you. That he created you for. I'm sorry. For the purpose that he created you for. So instead of sitting here doing all that, you know, I understand when it comes to separation. Yeah, you're going to spend that time licking your wounds a little bit. You know, you're going to, you might isolate. You're going to be to yourself and do what you have to do. But the main thing you need to focus on is focus on God. Focus on healing. Seek God, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness above all else. And all these things should be added unto you. You need to go in. You need to self-reflect. You need to love on yourself. All that love you was pouring on that narcissist and that toxic individual, pour that back into yourself. At least you know that you're deserving of it. Focus on God because God is going to teach you how to love yourself properly. He's going to teach you what your true worth and value is to him. And in doing so, you will learn to open your eyes and begin to see who God created you to be and who you truly are to God. And once you come to that realization, you will never, ever, ever accept anything less than, than what God has for you. You will never allow another individual to, to, uh, to hurt you and abuse you like that. You will never, you will stop entertaining the individuals that you once entertained. Those individuals that do have narcissistic traits, those individuals who were um, purposely choosing, choosing, excuse me, purposely, willfully choosing to live in the world, in the ways of the world. You won't have time to entertain them no more. Now, don't get me wrong. God might, you know, allow you to, to um, be present in some of these individuals' lives to minister to them you know, to, to share the word of God, the, you know, the glory of God with them and to give them revelation. But God will lead you to those whom he wants you to share with, who he needs you to, to assist in healing or deliver it, if that is something he has for you to do. But instead of focusing on that, focus on God, focus on you, focus on recovering. So instead of sitting here, um, 
stalking that narcissist or that toxic individual's social media, wondering, oh, are they with the new supply? Oh, I wonder how him, how them and the new supply is working out. I wonder if they treating them like they treat me. I wonder if, if they're doing them better. I wonder if they changed their new supply. Scratch all that. Instead of worrying about all that, focus on you. Focus on healing. Focus on God. Because guess what? You sitting on here watching them with a the new supply, how is that benefiting you? Is that giving you a second a moment of the time back that you lost while being abused and by that individual and loving someone that clearly didn't love you that had the that was in able that had the inability to love you is that going to give you that back is that going to heal your heart is that going to help you become better is that going to help you build a more intimate and close relationship with god or is it going to hinder you So at the end of the day, and, and and as I mentioned, the whole social media thing, just know this. They probably likely will try and flaunt this individual on social media or try and flaunt little aspects of their life on social media just with the intention for you to see it, to try to rub it in your face or to try and pose as the individual who's got it all together. They want to put up a facade and make you think that they're doing so much better off without you. And that is not the case at all. Because you know exactly the individual that you were to them, who you are, per who the person that uh, God created you to be, and you also know who they are. Now, now that God has revealed that to you, so therefore, it's a facade. All of that is for show because they want the world to think that they're living it up. That they have found someone that's so much better than you when in reality, you can never be replaced. You can never be replaced. You always be the one that got away because you were that great A supply. You were that individual. You were that child of God. You are anointed. You are a chosen one. So continue to focus on God and, and his righteousness above all else. And all these things should be added unto you. Instead of pursuing that person, pursue God. Chase after God. Spend a long time with God. Pray to God. Talk to God. And repent to God for idolizing that individual. Repent for idolatry. Because if you're so stuck in your mind about this individual and what they're doing and, and if they changed and if they haven't and what, what's going on with the new supply, you idolizing that individual because your focus is so much so on that individual that it's not on God. Seek God for deliverance. Seek God for healing. Seek God for transformation. And it shall be so. So I just pray that this quick word blesses someone and encourages someone. If you feel led by the Holy Spirit to be a blessing to the channel or to, um, to support in any way, shape, or form, the ways you can do so are down in the description box. I love you all. God loves you all. God bless you all. Talk to you soon.